Beautiful morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this morning's acts of worship as we give God thanks and praise for his bountiful blessings of love. Today, I say special thank you to the Reverend Father Aaron Charles and, of course, to the Reverend Agnes Bacchus for their invitation to be able to bring this service to you from the parish of St. Christopher as I'm visiting this morning. So it is my pleasure to be here with you. Welcome to Morning Prayer. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. In every rough and stormy service continues on page 33 in our books of common prayer and the pages following thereafter the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and in truth for such the father seeks to worship him john 4 23 blessed be the lord our god by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Together, Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory, you are the source of all goodness. Let our worship be a witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Divinity. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph toward to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving 
and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it. His hands molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes. He comes to judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God, and listen to my prayer. I call upon you from the ends of the earth, with heaviness in my heart. Set me upon the rock that is higher than I, for you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. I will dwell in your house forever. I will take refuge under the cover of your wings. For you, O oh God, have heard my vows. You have granted me the heritage of those who fear your name. Add length of days to the king's life. Let his years extend over many generations. Let him sit enthroned before God forever. Bid love and faithfulness watch over him. So will I always sing the praise of your name. And day by day, I will fulfill my vows. Psalm 62. For God alone my soul in silence waits. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will you assail me to crush me, all of you together? As if you were a leaning fence, a toppling wall. They seek only to bring me down from my place of honor. Lies are their chief delight. They bless with their lips, but in their hearts they curse. For God alone my soul in silence waits. Truly my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation my stronghold so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales, they are lighter than a breath, all of them together. 
put no trust in extortion. In robbery, take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord. For you repay everyone according the of God, to his deeds. Written in First Kings, chapter 21, verses 17 to 29. Then the word of the Lord came to Elisha the Tishbite, saying, Go down to meet King Ahab of Israel, who rules in Samaria. He is now in the vineyard of Naboth, where he has gone to take possession. You shall say to him, Thus says the Lord, Have you killed and also taken possession? You shall say to him, Thus says the Lord, in the place where dogs licked up the blood of Naboth, dogs will also lick up your blood. Ahab said to Elisha, Have you found me, O my enemy? He answered, I have found you, because you have sold yourself to do what is evil in the sight of the Lord. I will bring disaster on you, I will consume you, and will cut off from Ahab every meal bond or free in Israel. And I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam, son of Nabat, and like the house of Basha, son of Ahijah, because you have provoked me to anger and have caused Israel to sin. Also concerning Jezebel, the Lord said, the dogs shall eat Jezebel within the bounds of Jezreel. Anyone belonging to Ahab who dies in the city, the dog shall eat. And any one of his who dies in the open country, the birds of the air shall eat. Indeed, there was no one like Ahab who sold himself to do what is evil in the sight of the Lord. Urged on by his wife Jezebel, he acted most abominably in going after idols, as the Amorites had done whom the Lord drove out before the Israelites. When Ahab heard those words, he tore his clothes and put sackcloth over his bare flesh. He fasted, lay in the sackcloth, and went about dejectedly. Then the word of the Lord came to Elisha the Tishbite. Have you seen how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the disaster in his days, but in his son's days, I will bring the disaster on his house. The word of the Lord. Thanks Amen. be to God. <clears throat> the Benedictus. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant, David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins and the tender compassion of our God. The dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 12 to 17. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, 
he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I come to you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends in Christ, God is calling you to serve. Yes, you. Have you ever thought? Let's scratch that word thought. Have you heard God's advertisement for you? and your life? Have you heard about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Have you heard about the mansions and the place that Jesus has gone ahead to prepare for us? Yes, God is calling you to serve him. Sounds like a military ad, doesn't it? But yes, God is calling you to be a soldier in his army. Mission. Battle. Servitude. God is calling all of us. Have you heard what, he, what your role is and the responsibility to which you are assigned? But how would you know if you don't take a moment to listen to God. You see, many of us are so content with our lives daily that we do not take into consideration what it is that God has in store for you and for me. As a matter of fact, God has an opportunity to transform your life. He has an opportunity, but we need to accept him as our Lord and Savior. Friends, let us do what we know God wants us to do. Let us do what is right. And let us follow the life that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, outlined for us. You know Jesus? Jesus, born of the Virgin Mary, that Jesus, the Jesus whom Herod tried to have killed, that Jesus, the Jesus who turned water into wine, that Jesus, Jesus, born of a virgin, the Son of God. Jesus is calling you to transform your life and to accept the mission that God has put before you. He is calling you to open your ears so that you can hear his words. Open your eyes so that you can see what he wants you to see. And to open your hearts so that God's floodgates of love can overfill us so that we can have more than enough to share with others. That is what God wants us to do. But you see, sometimes we get so comfortable, even that when things seem to go wrong, we use it as the excuse. It had a fellow like that in the Bible, I know. His name was Moses. Moses said, but I, I, I stammer. And he gave every excuse in the world. But God had a purpose for him. Joseph 
He was sold by his brothers into slavery. And he became the right hand of the king. And in his doing, God used Joseph to save his whole line of people from famine. God can use you too. Let us not keep thinking that we are less than we are. But let us acknowledge God's marvelous power in our lives and the transformative, powerful lessons that we can learn from our Holy Scripture. My dear friends in Christ, that Jesus that we spoke about earlier, when he began his ministry, he took time out and went into Galilee where he had quiet so he could get and be there in peace. And then after, we read in Matthew chapter 4 where he decided, here's what, he went further and he left his home of Nazareth and went to Capernaum. So when he went to Capernaum, he left, what he did consequentially was left his comfort zone of mother, father, brothers, sisters, cousins, aunties, and the list goes on. He left what was familiar to serve God. My question to you now is, what are you willing to do to serve God? Or rather, what are we? Because I am not free from the question. So what are we willing to do to serve God in spirit and in truth, in righteousness and in peace, in love and hope and joy and sacrifice? Yes. What are we willing to give up to be able to serve God as he expects of us? What are we willing to give up to be able to transform our lives into ways that we don't even think is possible. God has a call on your life. And you are there to be a part of this call. God is the branch of the vine and you are the leaf and the fruit that God has given to us. It makes sense? Because the fruit that God bears is to serve others. The fruit that he bears is for us to be able to go and take it to feed others and teach others about the body and blood of Christ. To teach others about the everlasting water so that when they drink of that water, they will thirst no more. Friends in Christ, Jesus is calling you today. He is calling you to say yes to him. He is calling you to transform your lives. He is calling you to say, yes, Father, here I am. Take me. God is expecting a lot from us. But we need to retreat, my dear friends. Take time out from the ordinary and, yes, it's not that we just taking a little break, you know, spend time to let God tell us what it is that he expects of us. That is what we're taking time out for, not just for another time to hang out or to run away from work or what have you, but a time for us to truly spend in the presence of God and let God speak to us. Let us have our wilderness experience and let God be that transformative light. Friends in Christ, Jesus did not get nailed on the cross for nothing. He died so that you can be saved, I could be saved, and we could be here today. He died so that we can have an opportunity to obtain the glorious promises of God of life eternal in heaven with him. Turn and accept Jesus Christ, my friends, as your personal Lord and Savior.
Let God be your guide. Let him be your comfort. Don't think for a second that you can do it on our own. But we need to plug in to God. So that if we are giving the light of the world, the energy comes from God. You are good enough. Get on your knees. Surrender your sins and your doubts to God. Answer the call that God has set out for you. And let God work marvelous power in your life. The Lord be with you. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee.
affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our intercessions. In our intercessions, we continue to pray for the Most Reverend Howard Gregory, Archbishop of the Church in the province of the West Indies. We pray for all bishops throughout all parts of the province. In particular, we pray for the Right Reverend Claude Weekly, Diocesan Bishop of Trinidad and Tobago. We pray for Calvin and Clive, Assistant Bishops, both retired. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the parish of St. Barnabas in Pleasantville, where the Reverend Canon Dr. Steve West, Archdeacon Emeritus, is priest. We pray as well for the Reverend Fitzgerald Delbro, who is assisting, and we also pray for the fellowship of vocation. In our own parish of St. Mary, we pray for the Reverend Dr. Anderson Maxwell, our parish priest, and all members of clergy who are assisting at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let us pray. O God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's send some birthday greetings. So we start our birthdays with the 17th, which was Sunday. So we'll say happy birthday to Dean Lewis, to Esther Blake, to Arlene Gill, to Lynette Noel, and as well to Cara Ion Clark. And then we jump to the 18th yesterday, where we have Terence Thomas, Shirley Banfield, Bolan, Gilbert Kanai. Yes, I have that pronounced correctly. And I as well would like to say happy belated happy birthday today. Alright, to Fayola De Noon. She hails from the South Region. To Licia Ashe. To Liz oh, sorry, Licia Morris. Cynthia Pran Edwards to Sharon Dolly to Selma Davis, 
to my Ronald Garnett who all celebrate their birthdays today all right and as we celebrate tomorrow please well i would like to send birthday greetings to my dear cousin afia lapierre and also to my dear friend maya williams she celebrates her birthday tomorrow please god she is presently um in the u.s studying all right so and i would also like to say happy birthday in advance to aisha peters francis all right so and then on the 21st that's on thursday we say happy birthday to reverend father michael lawrence we say happy birthday as well to abigail hayes uh to sharon cave coffee and to terry matthew to patricia nimblet to stella hamilton and odelin Pierre. All right, and on the 22nd, I would like to say happy birthday to Akim Bailey. All right, as I who celebrates her birthday alongside um Yvonne Bartholomew. So, to all of you, happy birthday to you all. May God richly bless, keep, guide, and protect you as you celebrate another year of life. God bless you all. The Prayer of Dedication Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons and the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and the Son of the Holy Spirit.